G'day guys, so it has been a little while, well a whole year to be exact, we're in 2021 now and uh, welcome to another adventure. So today we're down on the Donnelly River here in South Southwestern Australia. If you don't know where that is I might put up a little map in this section right now. But pretty much we're going to go for a kayak and uh, we're just waiting on Mike to get the kayak down so hopefully that happens sometime soon. I'm working as fast as I can. So yeah, and then we'll get started. Let's get into it. So I'm pretty excited about doing this because this is something that I've been meaning to do for ages. Camp out of the kayak. I've always wanted to go out on the ocean somewhere, find an island and camp on it. But I feel like doing it on a river is a really good way just to ease into it. And like the thing I love about the idea of kayak camping is that it's like hiking, you still want to have lightweight stuff, but technically you can carry a lot more water and go for a lot longer. So really keen to try it out. So just going to finish packing and then we'll get into it and I'll tell you guys what I've been up to for the past year. Yeah, see this is what I mean about carrying water. I can carry stacks of water. If I can make it fit that is. Packing's never been my strong point. It's actually really funny. You see that five knot sign over there? Well, nobody goes five knots on this river. Like when I used to have the dinghy, I came down here one day and I was just putting along and everyone's just flying by. It's quite funny, but really, like really, really keen to show you guys what's down the other end of the river. I think it's pretty cool, but we'll get there later. Um, it's all about safety when you're going out solo. Always remember that guys, be safe, first aid kit and a personal locator beacon we got with us today. This is actually a really good first aid kit. I got one probably, oh, 10 years ago, just from BCF, I think it was. And like, it was so hard to just understand where everything is. This one's so nicely laid out. You can see where everything is just really quickly. And the thing is, when you're under stressful situations, you're not gonna really be thinking that well. So really good little first aid kits, these. Not that I'm sponsored or anything by them, just worth checking out, guys, if you ever need one. They're actually pretty reasonably priced too, in my opinion. When I was thinking about this trip, I was like, man, I'm going to have so much room. Like, I got the whole kayak that I can fill. And now it's like chockers, hey. <laughs> but um, this is the trouble with YouTubing, you know? you just got to carry so much camera gear. Now, the other question, can I actually get it to the water? Oh, yeah. Hopefully. Let's do it. I was like so stoked, I was like, I've managed to fit everything. And then when I just came back to get the camera, I was like, oh, that's right, I gotta fit the tripod too. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, 2020, what a year. And I don't know, to start with, I just want to say thank you to everyone that commented on the last video I put out back in January 2020. There was so much appreciation for the channel and what it meant to people. And I really appreciate all the comments. And thanks so much, guys, for still supporting the channel. I mean, like, there's been comments even I was looking a couple of days ago because it's kind of like the one year anniversary of no videos. And everyone's like, come back, do a video. So here we are today doing another adventure video, doing something that I've wanted to do for ages. So we've got about 12 kilometers from the boat ramp to the ocean. And uh, I don't know, I'm guessing it's roughly gonna take me about two hours in the kayak. So we'll see how we go. Beautiful day for it. And hopefully this wind doesn't pick up too much tonight. Now, 2020, crazy year, coronavirus started, lockdowns, isolation, all that kind of stuff. And to be honest, here in WA especially, Western Australia, we really have not been affected by it too much. I mean, like, I think we've had around 600 cases, which is nothing when you compare it to the rest of the world. So if you're in an area that's been really affected by it, really hope you guys are just doing your best to stay mentally and physically active, you know, trying to be creative, whatever you can do, and just try and exercise as much as you can. 
it's so good to get out of the house if you're able to do that where you live but yeah like here in WA we just we don't know how good we've got it really I mean I'm paddling on my kayak on this beautiful day while other people can't even leave their house so really hope you guys are keeping all right wherever you are in the world because yeah it's put a big strain on everyone this year I think but hopefully 2021 things improve we'll see how we go there's not actually that many places to get up and stretch out of the kayak along this river so I'm just making the most of the opportunity while it's here pretty much so in we did kind of go into a lockdown, but it kind of ended pretty quickly. So in May, the borders actually opened. And it was pretty funny because three days before the borders opened, a little bunch of us were just like, well, let's do a trip. Like the borders are opening. So we're able to actually travel into regional WA. So we kind of chanced it a little bit because we were like, oh, maybe we can get through a little bit earlier. So I've got this little clip of when we went through the borders, they technically weren't open. <laughs> But the police let us through anyway. Dude, it literally looks like they're packing up Yeah, now. pretty much. Uh, hey guys. I think we just got through the checkpoint. We just got through we the checkpoint. We just got through the checkpoint. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> And I asked the thing, and here I was getting so nervous. <laughs> Sweet. So that was super cool because we got up to Mika Thara that night, and man, I don't know, every time I'm in Mika Thara, the stars just blow me away. Like, here's a couple of snaps I took when we were up there, and that was just amazing. So, pretty much spent six days on the road. It was a super, super, super short trip, but it was so much fun. And uh, we kind of went, did Karajini pretty much, hit X Mouth, did a little bit of snorkeling. And this is why I love the Ningaloo Reef. And came back home crack a trip and we even got a little dance video that I might put at the end of this video just for a bit of a laugh because that was really good fun to make right now we've got a tour boat coming up the river so uh, if you ever feel like visiting the Donnelly River they do actually have this tour boat that goes up to the uh, ocean mouth so that's another cool thing to check out if you don't have a sea kayak or a boat yourself you told me that now we reach the end Sat in the sun and I hate you so much I stole your bicycle It's all said and done Now honey you won You can see what I mean Nobody goes five knots along this river Ever Woohoo Every year in Australia, tourists, you know, end up in sticky situations because I haven't stuck to signposted tracks. It's very important to do that, guys, stick to signposted tracks. Fortunately, the Donnelly River is very well signposted, so you can't really get lost. So if you guys are watching this video and kind of going like, oh, man, he used to have a lot of, like, drone shots in his videos. Well, unfortunately, I sold the drone when I kind of stopped doing the channel. So I'm thinking of just trying something here. Instead of using drone shots from this trip, I might just chuck in a few some from some other trips. We'll see how that goes. See what I mean? You really couldn't get lost if you tried. I've never seen such a well signed posted river.
we there yet? Ooh, it's really starting to widen out, so we must be getting pretty close. All right, guys, let's do a bit of uh, theoretical imagination here. Let's say that you wanted to build a shack 10 kilometers down a river, and the only way to get materials in to where you're building the shack is to bring it in all by boat. Now, like, what kind of shack do you picture in your mind? Because uh, I definitely don't picture something like this. Like, that is definitely not what I call a shack. That is a house. And there's about, to, let's say, 25 of these shacks down here at the end of the Donnelly River, just before you get to the ocean. It's so cool. They built them years ago and they've just maintained them. They're privately owned and yeah, they're just awesome. It'd be such a nice place to have a holiday house, that's for sure. Found this nice bit of grass to pull up on, so. In fact, if I can't find anywhere else nice to camp up there, I might actually just camp up here on the beach, but. We'll keep going, get to the ocean, see how we go. Should have packed more water. Kind of getting a bit thirsty and it's all in the back where I can't get to while I'm paddling. <laughs> you can tell it's my first time, can't you? <laughs> all right, let's go check out the ocean and the sunset. Nice little beach here, but not quite big enough to camp on. I think it's out of the wind as well, which is awesome. But yeah, we'll keep looking. But man, pretty cool limestone formation back up on that hill back there. Looks awesome. So we're just coming around to the ocean now. If we're lucky, we'll catch the sunset. Just gonna check out this little camp spot here. Cause I've actually seen people camping here last time I came up. It's not really ideal because the wind's coming from that direction, but if there's enough trees, oh yeah, might be sheltered enough. That's actually not a bad little spot just in there. Ah, some toilet paper as well. Don't you just love that, guys? I tell you guys what, I'd be lying if I said I don't miss having the drone when you got like that kind of scene behind you. Golden hour, sun on the cliffs. That'd be such a sick shot from the sky but some dummy went and sold the drone, so you guys are just gonna have to put up with the handheld stuff. But I do have one drone shot from last time I came here, so I might just flick that up right now just to give you guys an idea what the area looks like. What a crack of sunset, hey, that was awesome. So, I'm not gonna camp here, that's for sure. It's pretty windy coming straight down the coast, so I'm gonna duck back in, maybe camp at the grassy spot. Haven't really decided yet, but we'll see what happens. Well, we got somewhere to camp, that's always a good start. I'm just gonna jump in for a quick dip because I need a bit of a freshen up, I'll tell you that much. And uh, after that, we'll get some dinner happening and I'll tell you guys what else I got up to in 2020. Um, where is dinner? I swear I'd put my dinner in here. Okay, maybe I didn't put it in there. So tonight for dinner we have Thai chicken curry and this thing has been sitting in my car for about the past two years just waiting to be used. Dinner is served. That's really good. Ooh, a little bit spicy. So, what else happened in 2020? Uh, in August, me and Misha and a couple of other friends, well, we jumped in the 100 series. They had a Nissan Patrol, and we went up to the Pilbara again. I think you guys are probably picking up a trend that I really like the Pilbara. 
And this trip was actually really, really cool because there was only one spot that we went to that we'd been before. Everything else was new. So for the whole two weeks, we were seeing all new stuff. And it's just, it just, again, the Pilbara just blew my mind that you can have such beauty in such arid places. Like, it's just so awesome. And I actually just made like a little one minute video that I might actually stick in right now just to show how even in the middle of nowhere, you can have so much life. Let's check it out. For the most part, this is what the Pilbara looks like. Spin effects as far as the eye can see with the occasional tree. Very arid and very inhospitable. But check out what happens when you add just a little bit of water. And then after that we headed around to Karatha to catch up with some friends and we actually did a bit of four-wheel driving which is funny because like you think Pilbara four-wheel drive, you need four-wheel drive but a lot of it is just high clearance, you just need high clearance so you don't actually get to lock in the hubs that often so we did the jump up, I always get it confused with step up but I'm pretty sure it's called the jump up so that was pretty cool, got to a little remote beach and chilled out there for the afternoon so that was awesome and the Nissan Patrol just made light work of getting up there but it was cool to do a bit of forward driving and then we saw a portaloo in a really really remote location and that was just hilarious uh, let's just play that clip excuse the portrait mode, I wasn't expecting to put it on YouTube we just did an hour and a half of forward driving through like river crossings, thigh deep water we get to the end here in the gorge and there's this. That's just gold. <laughs> that was a really, really random place to find a port like, especially after a couple of hours of forward driving. That was fairly intense, you know, river crossings, all that kind of thing. So that was pretty funny. And then towards the end of the trip, we kind of had a bit of a spontaneous moment, which was really, really cool. We're just sitting at the bakery in Carnarvon and we're just running ahead of schedule. We still had two nights before we needed to be home. And someone at the bakery recognized me from the channel and we just started talking and they were like, oh, we just been to Mount Augustus and it was like, oh, well, that's something we haven't ever done yet. So me and Misha were like, let's just do it. So we pinned it out there to Mount Augustus, did it first thing in the morning, got up there in just under two hours, I think. It was a cracker hike, like it would be amazing to be up there after rains because there's so many pools that would be full. But... That was really, really cool, and oh man, it was so awesome. At the very top of Mount Augustus, you got this mount, oh, I don't know, this stack of rocks that's been concreted, and it's hilarious because the concrete and the water for the concrete had all been hiked up by hikers. Like, they didn't helicopter drop it or anything like that. And then also there's a bench at the very top too, and that was also brought up in pieces. It's just like, man, that is hardcore, like, doing it like that. But no, that was really, really cool fun, so. And besides that, I've just done a few, you know, weekenders down south in 2020 as I could to get away, so that's been really cool. So yeah, that's pretty much my year wrapped up. So I'm gonna finish dinner, get the tent set up, and probably hit the sack. <music> Helps if you put it the right way up. I, 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 I must be tired because I have no idea what I'm doing. Eh? I swear I've put up a tent before. <laughs> oh mate, this is gold. Anybody would think I've never been camping before, eh? We got there in the end. So, last time I went hiking camping, 
and there is a video on that if you want to watch it. I might put it in the description down below. I didn't have a pillow with me, so this time I've kind of splashed out a bit and got a budget pillow. So I think I'm going to sleep a lot better tonight, hopefully. Look at that, flash as. One of my biggest regrets is buying this mattress because it's only a three quarter mattress. Like it's not a full, full length one. So like it packs down a lot smaller than, you know, your regular size one, but just like, man, I don't know what I was thinking when I got it. I don't know what I was thinking when I got that curry too. All right, guys, see you in the morning. <laughs> Good morning, guys. So I gotta tell ya, having a pillow just made all the difference. I slept so well last night. Once I hit the sack, I did not wake up all night. So that was absolutely the bomb. And today I'm feeling good, which is awesome because like seriously, when you're out camping, there's nothing worse than getting a bad night's sleep. Like you need a good night's sleep because otherwise you're just cranky the next day and it just, nothing's good. The world's not a good place to be. So let's get some breakfast happening and then start heading back. And uh, I guess I better tell you guys what's new on the car as well. So this morning for breakfast, just doing some porridge. Uh, it's pretty much just dehydrated milk, sugar, a bit of cinnamon, some oats. Chuck it in there for a few minutes to cook up and she'll be good. Probably my biggest mistake with this whole little expedition so far is uh, not bringing enough water. I totally thought, I like seven liters I thought would be stacks, but um, it's left me with about 1.8 liters to get back to the car, which I don't know, I would have liked a bit more because it could be a bit warm later. But anyway, what do you do? You always learn, eh? And actually this, this is one of the cool things I like about kayak camping is I could bring more water and I don't have to carry it, you just whack it in the kayak and away you go. Anyway, let's suit up and get out of here. Running through the last of my thoughts Standing on the edge of my tongue Everything I know will be gone in a minute And that's alright Running through the last Got a pretty strong headwind this morning, making life a little bit more fun. But we're getting there slowly. It just doesn't feel like you're moving anywhere. Woo. And that's all right. All right, I'm free. You guys know the most frustrating part about doing this whole videoing, coming back to get the camera thing? This thing's like the Titanic. Like trying to turn it around is impossible, hey. <laughs> it's awesome fun. There's another boat that's going faster than five knots. <laughs> oh, good mate. Well, at least he was nice and said sorry about the waves. So you might be wondering, do I regret giving up on the channel? And the short answer is definitely no. Like, I think it was a great decision. And few reasons for that. Like, first things first, like, as channels get bigger, successful channels, like there's only one direction they can really go and that's just to, you know, keep pushing products, getting more sponsorships. And you just kind of end up selling yourselves to companies that just want you to push their products. And I'm not really into that. Like, I just wanted the channel to be fun. But at the same time, you can understand why it happens with channels because, you know, it's a job for them. They, they need to make money somehow. And then with that, like, as you get bigger, you get famous. I'm not really into getting famous. I find it awkward enough when people see me at the shopping center and recognize me, you know? 
I don't mind being a nobody. It's, I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> And then like you don't see all the hard work that goes into a channel either like there's so much editing and behind the scenes work and like you watch channels and you're like man like they're living the life you know they've made it and it's like well it doesn't really bring you true happiness being famous and making money like at the end of the day and for me like personally like i've been pretty involved in volunteer work for 2020 and planning to do a stack more of it in 2021 because I just find that helping people just, you know, actually makes me happy as opposed to being on YouTube, being famous, doesn't really bring you true happiness, but do I regret it? Nah. At the end of the day though, I still love getting out here. This is my passion, the outdoors, trying new things, pushing myself out of my comfort zone. It's really good fun. And I hope that's what you guys took away from the channel too, like get out there, try new things, get outdoors. It's so healthy to be outside. We're almost back at the boat ramp, I think. Well, that's another thing I can check off my list, kayak camping. So I definitely like the fact that you don't have to carry it all on your back and it definitely makes it a lot easier to record because you can actually carry all your gear, which is pretty handy. So what about the car? What's changed on the car? Well, not really too much. I mean, she's lost weight. That's probably the biggest changes ever since you guys have seen her. Besides that, everything stayed the same. And when I say losing weight, I mean, uh, I changed the rims and the tires. I used to have the muddies. And man, the muddies looked awesome, but with the steel rims, they were ridiculously heavy. So it's pretty amazing. By just changing the rims and tires, I actually lost 60 kilos. And then also, I used to have two AGM batteries under the back of the tray. Now, I managed to save 48 kilograms just by changing to one lithium battery. So I've lost a little bit of capacity, but I've gained so much. Well, I've lost weight, you know what I mean? So that's probably the biggest changes to the car. Besides that, I'm pretty happy with where it's at. Now it's just a case of using it as much as I can. I know some guys out there are constantly chopping and changing things, but uh, yeah, she's doing pretty well. It's a good rig and she goes everywhere I need it to. So that's all you can ask for, eh? Super heavy, weighs barely a thing. Yeah, everything else is pretty much the same as it was. It was pretty awesome with the lithium battery I got. It was only a cheap one but it's got an inbuilt battery management system. So I didn't actually even need to change my DC to DC charger because it all does it itself. So that's pretty awesome too. And that was just like a budget lithium as well. It wasn't one of the real expensive ones. And I've had that for now 15 months and that's going really, really cool. Like I love the lithium because it just charges so much faster like before, cause I had 240 amp hours. If I'd used a lot of amp hours, like a hundred amp hours, it would take me the whole day to get that back in driving. Now after about two and a half hours or something like that, I'll be back up to capacity. So it's so much faster charging. That's probably the biggest benefit of going to lithium. If you're thinking about it, if you've got AGMs that are working, I wouldn't really worry about it. But as far as saving weight goes, it does go a long way, especially if you've got two batteries. But yeah, besides that, nothing too exciting. Just get out there and use it as much as I can nowadays. Well, thanks for coming along on this adventure, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and um, we actually reached 100,000 subscribers a couple of days ago, which kind of totally blew my mind. I never thought we were gonna get there, but we did, all thanks to you guys, so thanks so much for that as well. Will there be another video on the channel? I guess we we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, guys, don't forget to get out there and... Seek adventure!